What is up everybody? Bill with Honest Open Permaculture, Hop Farm, and we're out here in the garden to talk about the very best organic pest control you can have in your garden. So we're going to be talking about the very best pest control you can have in your garden. See this market garden, CSA garden that I have behind me, uh, we're having quite a bit of pest problems right now and I'm doing multiple things, sorry the camera's shaking here, I'm doing multiple things to help with the pests. Um, I took a sh couple short videos of the type of pest we have, uh, let me throw those in here right now. Here we have an aphid. It's hard to see. It's hard to zoom in on. Let's see if we can get this camera to focus a little bit. It's right in the middle there. It's a little aphid. Smash him. Smashed. Oh, hop farm smash. Here's a, a cabbage worm. A little green guy down there. So what we do to these guys is we smash them. So we do to all the bugs out here. So the pest I'm dealing with right now is aphids, cabbage worm, a little green worm, and spider mites is what I'm dealing with. Um, how do I, how am I controlling them? What is the best way to control them? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right off bat what the best way is. The best pest control in the garden is you and me. There's no substitute for the farmer or the gardener in their beds, looking at their plants, handling their plants, removing pests, and then adding what they need to to deter those pests. So that may not have been the answer you guys have been thinking, I was going to say, but the number one best pest control is you. Once you figure out what pests you have, then you can control those pests with different methods. Um, I use a couple different methods out here to try to deter pests. Uh, I have made a video in the past about planting onions to help deter moles. And ever since I planted those onions, I have not had any moles. So far, so good. Let me show you real quick. Uh, here's a bed of uh, broccoli, cabbage, and kale. And around the outside of the bed, there is these onions right here and I put them all around the outside kind of like an onion wall to hold back the moles so far no mole pressure in in these beds so we've also had cabbage worm as you can tell in this cabbage here it's got holes and they will come on the back side of the leaf and eat the leaf so what am I doing for cabbage worm and also spider mites and also aphids? You can see my plants are dusted. That is an organic material that I'm using on these plants. It's called diametaceous earth. I'm sure you guys have heard about it. If you haven't, please do some research on it. It is great stuff in the garden. Not only in the garden, it's great stuff for your animals and for you. It'll clean you out. It'll clean your animals out. So now I've heard a couple different reasons on why um, di diamantaceous earth works so well on your plants. Um, one of the reasons I've heard why it works so well is that under an, on a microscopic level, if you would take a microscope and look at this diamantaceous earth, it's going to be really sharp, really jagged, and what it's going to do is when a soft-bodied creature crawls over it or comes in contact with it it's gonna it's gonna nick them a little bit it's gonna cut them a little bit and they're gonna dehydrate they're gonna start losing fluids and liquids and dehydrate and die I've also heard that diametaceous earth also sucks the like the waxy liquid coating on the bugs um, and dries them up that way so I don't know which way is correct. Maybe both of them are correct. Maybe it hits them both ways and both way work. Um, but that's why I use diametaceous earth. It's all natural. It's organic. 
it's a fossilized plant uh, that has been crushed down into a powder. Uh, also make sure you buy the food grade. There's different types of diamantaceous earth. Buy the food grade diamantaceous earth to use on your plants or to use inside yourself or your pigs or your chickens or anything else. There is a, a kind of a, a particular way you want to administer the diamantaceous earth, how you want to put it on your plants. Uh, for instance, I don't want the cabbage worm in my broccoli heads, so I will douse the broccoli heads with the diamantaceous earth. So I did the top of these plants right now. Uh, now I'm going to go back through and do the underside of the plants. That's probably the biggest tip I can give you on spreading diamantaceous earth is it's great to put it on top of the plants, but most of the pests are going to be on the underside of the leaves eating from the bottom up. So if you put it on top, they're going to mess up your plants before they even get to the diamantaceous earth. So come in, take some diamantaceous earth, and toss it on the bottom side of the plants, underneath on the bottom side of the leaves, to protect them. Pest control also starts at the very beginning when you're getting your beds ready on what soil you're going to plant your plants into. If you have a really healthy plant, not deficient in any type of nutrients or water, then the bug's not going to go for that type of plant. They want more of a stressed plant um, to feed on. They're gonna, they, they, they see in a different spectrum than we do and they can see the plants a little bit different than we do and they can tell which plant is stressed and which plant is not stressed and they're going to go after those stressed plants. Um, and if, So if you have plants that are not stressed and growing like they should be, it's going to really cut back on the amount of um, pest pressure and also it's going to help a plant recover. If it does get pest pressure, it'll recover faster and won't take a biggest hit, still produce fruit. So what else do I do when the best pest control, me and you, sees pest? Another type of pest. Um, there's, there's, we can bring in beneficials. Besides just killing the pests that are there, we can bring in things like predatory wasps, things like ladybugs. Out here in the potatoes, we have another beneficial putting in work. Actually, multiple right beside each other. Out here, there's see a little ladybug. Excellent aphid killer. I even think they go after the spider mites too. And then we've got the little predatory wasps. As you can see right there. All back in here. How can we bring those in? Um, beneficial plants that they enjoy. Um, flowers. Uh, like, as you can tell, let me show you here. I have marigolds planted all the way down here on each side of the bed, on this side of the bed, and down there on that side of the bed, there's marigolds to help bring in some bees and some wasps. So another thing you can do is how you plant, where you plant. Um, not putting, for instance, I made that mistake here in these first two bed, first three beds, where I put nothing but cabbage in this bed. Then I put nothing but broccoli in this bed. Then I put almost nothing but cabbage in this bed over there. So when the cabbage worm found its cabbage here, it had a smorgasbord and a party on my cabbage. As you can tell, there's holes all in it. So you can interplant or spread your cabbage out. If I had spread my cabbages out amongst these beds, there wouldn't have been such a big dinner bell ringing for these cabbage worms for this bed and it would have helped with the pressure of how many worms were there I've been picking them off every day squashing them adding more diet to nature sir. if it rains guess what's gonna happen to your dietation earth it's gonna wash off your plants and get to come back and add some more so it's not a one-time fix when gardening organically or growing organically it's an everyday fix. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the beast that we deal with. It's just the nature of the beast. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'm going to leave you with a shot of the garden here. There's my bag of diatenaceous earth I've just been spreading. It is looking good, y'all.
The back to Eden Garden behind it's looking good, exploding. If you are one of my CSA customers, I want to give you a quick shout out and say thank you. This is our first week of delivery. Had my first deliveries yesterday and I've got my second delivery for the week on Saturday. I do have a couple more spots open if you're interested. Go to hopfarmnc.com and you can sign up there. It is free delivery as long as you're in the Tri or Greensboro, Winston-Salem area. All right, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this video. And remember, the best pest control is you. Don't let anybody, any salesman try to say, just spray this chemical on, just do this, and you'll be pest free forever. First off, they're lying to you, and they're trying to sell you some crap, okay? Don't spray that stuff on your plants. If you enjoyed this video, y'all, please make sure you give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, and share this with a friend, because I'm sure they're trying to figure out ways on how to prevent or how to manage their pest problem. Later.